Welcome to Make It, your business, the podcast. Get the advice you need to grow your business by getting guidance from industry experts and interviews with successful small business owners. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe. Hey, good morning. Good morning. You got no drink today? <laughs> I'm going to continue with you again. I'll be all right for this bit, yeah. yeah that's fine. Excellent. Thank you. So we're in a strange bit between uh, Christmas and New Year. Yes, yes. Yeah, but um, today we were going to be talking about New Year's resolutions for business hours, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I Yeah, okay. Look, it's the time of year, g- gyms, I think most people are aware, they get massive sign-ups in January. Yeah. The best intentions. Um, look, we, we don't have enough time on this podcast to go through sort of how to keep your resolutions. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about free, free, yeah, free resolutions. I want all business owners to sort of look at next year because you and I discussed this before. What you plan to do and take action happens. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's just a dream, isn't it? It's yeah. not a plan. Yeah. So I want all, all business owners that are stuck, whatever their position, good, medium, bad, just to start out. So my third reserve, I'm just going to pick my phone up and then mm-hmm. charge more for your services. Okay. That's the first resolution. Yeah. Actually, a charge. How can I charge more? I guess a lot of, I was going to say, I guess a lot of businesses do do sort of like, you know, yearly price increases and, you know, what better time to do it than the start of a new year. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the bigger corporations obviously do it and they keep in line with inflation and use that obviously as a... Well, obviously inflation is high in the UK this year. Yeah. So there's definitely that. It's rightly or wrongly more palatable at the moment. People are expecting increases yep. based on all the media news so it's definitely the right time to to roll anything up into that mm-hmm. um, while it's part of the, the bigger noise and as a business owner i'd be very surprised if you've got services that you're using yourself but haven't got up in price in the last 12 months have raised yeah. you know we we sit down quarterly but also annually to talk talk about you know the future of the business and i suppose this is what this resolution is about there is a lot of information out there about predictions by economists on where it's going as well yeah and it's not invaluable because let's face it it's guess based on data and it's a very crazy world but mm-hmm. yeah if, if we've um got say a nine percent inflation at the moment and you're looking to add a nine percent increase it may not be enough no yeah. uh so you've got to be careful here with your mathematics so for example um we would look at let's say we had a nine um, percent increase in cost of services mm-hmm. it doesn't necessarily need to be a nine percent increase in the sales mm-hmm. price because if you take away your profit margin that only may equate to a six percent increase yeah. to cover costs mm-hmm. i want to talk about the next stage of price increase in it in a moment but what i'm saying to people is if this is your one bite of the apple or the chair there's a phrase in there <laughs> okay sure. might as well, i don't know yeah. um take this opportunity mm-hmm. to obviously increase the prices by a greater level than, than inflation because otherwise you're going to be in the same position you were last year yep. um, certainly I know my staff are looking at rises to combat you know the whole economy mm-hmm. needs to pull up in pricing so price increases supply and you've got to be prepared for that mm-hmm. um, it's very very foolish and I see a lot of small business owners try to absorb those costs mm-hmm as some sort of favor for yeah. their clients. Yeah. But the truth is, you can't do your clients favors if you don't exist. Mm. So if you don't pick your prices up accordingly, yeah. you just won't be here. Mm. And that's one side of it. So that's what I call my standstill price increases. But what I really want people, the New Year's resolution, apart from that element, which is, is more protective, mm-hmm. I want people to give some thought to added value. Okay. Um, um, we recently, in one of our businesses, increased our prices on uh, hosted, um, but we coincided it with adding extra features, which were available to us as low cost, yeah. um, but increased cost mm-hmm. to the client. Yeah. So ultimately, if the client went out and bought those services somewhere else, um, it would have cost them, I'm making this number up, but £50. Mm-hmm. Uh, we increased our prices by £10. Yep. But said, "Hey, these are these are now part of the deal, mm-hmm. and because of our buying power and, and knowledge, maybe the cost to us was four pound." Yep. So I really do think people can look at 
what services they have yep. and um, and say, right, if we're going to increase by 10% for inflation, mm -hmm. could we increase 20% and say that's a hundred pound item. So we go from 100 to 110 to cover inflation costs. Yep. And then we go to a 120, so that's 10 pound extra profit mm -hmm. per transaction. We utilize some of that 10 pound to add additional services. Okay. So then the customers of their businesses might not see it as such a, a jump. Yeah, it's... because you're getting extra. Yeah. Now, when we talk to digital clients, it's super easy because you can just add, uh, you know, workbooks, worksheets, an ebook. Uh, it's almost a zero sum cost. Just your time to create those yeah. and add that value. Mm -hmm. But I like to talk a lot more about bricks and mortar, not necessarily high street, but, you know, real boots on the ground business because they're the people we're talking to all yeah. the time yeah. you know they're not digital specialists mm -hmm. they are selling an item you know they're a dry cleaners yeah. uh, you know they're fitting garage door systems that you know things of this nature so it's looking at what what you can add yeah. um, so yeah I think in every every industry there's Adams, I suppose I can't go into specifics on industry but I suppose we can try and pick us some examples to reiterate this point uh -huh. um, Okay, so garage doors. Uh, I think if you were selling a garage door, let's say a thousand pound, maybe you could sell that at twelve hundred, but include uh, a free service checkup. Okay. Yeah. Yes. El electrician. So if you think like one of the old tradesmen. Tradesmen. Okay, so we're trained. It's a little different currently where we are in the economy. A lot of trades have too much work. Yep. Um, but certainly the same principles could apply if you install in, say, uh, new electrics in, in an extension, you could include an annual inspection. Mm -hmm. um, and it does two things. One, it, it correlates value, yep. so it's a greater value versus somebody else. Mm -hmm. But also another point which I'll come on to later is about retention of customers, yep. um, which is super, super important. Um, what else have we got? Um, upsells on... Yeah, I mean... The, it's the, it's that added value for the client, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, so in, in the dentistry world, uh, like there's quite a few different things. That, you know, some of, some of our clients in particular do. Um, but yeah, you know, there's there's small add-ons that you can give to the patients. Um, you know, things like teeth whitening if you go for you know one of the bigger but high ticket items, mm -hmm. normal treatments. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Because if we're having um, say an Invisalign. Mm -hmm. And your offering includes uh, two free teeth whitenings. Yep. The margin is quite high on teeth whitenings. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean, again, picking numbers here for for my simple brain with maths. <clears throat> the cost of you is two hundred pound for two teeth whitenings. Yep. You'd normally charge six hundred for that. Mm -hmm. You could increase the Invisalign cost by right. say five hundred. Yep. And say it includes two free teeth and that whitening is worth a six. Yep. Um, maybe the proportions don't quite work there, but yeah. yeah. You'd make an extra hundred pound, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, maybe it's 1400. Yeah. 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 So it's, um, no, so it, it, honestly it works. I mean, yeah. businesses, we've put this in often enough. If you've got a client that is buying off you, they like what you offer mm -hmm. and they will buy the peripheral products. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if they've got one product of yours, they'll leave the sub product. Mm -hmm. um, if I think like, a lot of business owners struggle as well, sort of displaying their products or services to their customers. Usually when a customer approaches you, they're after a particular service or, you know, product. They come and like, you know, if they end up being a customer, then obviously they've used you. And, you know, as long as you provide a good service or product, you know, they'll be happy with what, you, what you've done. But I think it's quite important to then obviously, you know, not necessarily upselling that particular you know, transaction the beauty because uh, a lot of people say, oh, I've got this thousand pound widget, this hundred pound. They find it ask, hard to ask for the extra hundred pound. Mm. But if they say this widget is now slightly more that comes with that free, mm. so the overall value is greater, up, yeah. that's only one ask. I know, I, I think most business people I've met would find that a lot more palatable. Yeah, I think it's just making it aware to customers, you know, what other products and services you do. Because, you know, a lot of the times, like, customers will be interested um, and, you know, go ahead and put Certainly on digital um, side of things, upsells, downsells, um, basket abandonments. Can, can we just talk about downsells? Because I don't think a lot of people understand, you know, like, the logic and why you'd want to, you know, try and, try and downsell a product or service to a customer. Mm. What, do you want to take that or do you want me? 
uh, well, well I, I know the premise. So obviously, you know, like if you're selling a product and then you obviously offer, you know, a cheaper product, then, you know, it makes people think that the product that they've chosen is more inferior and they're getting a, you know, a better service or a better product than, you know, what's on offer. I always relate it to um, Starbucks. Mm -hmm. No other coffee brands are available. <laughs> but no, the point is, they know, and they're not going to share this information, but half the reason there's multiple sizes is to make somebody's psychology think they're being smart by the decisions they make. Yeah. So, you know, the large, maybe four pounds, medium three, small two, and actually having a middle option, if you're selling the middle option, and then you, you say down sell, you say, or you can have this smaller one, which is slightly less, but proportionally more expensive. No. Yeah. It reiterates in the consumer's mind, the person, they're making the correct decision, mm. the smart decision. No. And I can't remember the study I read, but essentially that's why there's so many sizes in mm. coffees. No. Because it's psychological. Mm. Um, the same with luxury cars, items, they'll go, well, I'm not stupid, I'm not going to buy the expensive one, no. and I don't want the cheapest one. Because oh, yeah. again, most people's consumption patterns are, are self-reflection of what's going on in their mind. Yep. So they will go for the medium option. So if you're offering, as you say, medium, you're like, oh, by the way, you can do this. Right. Yeah, we can give, give you the small cup if you want. Yeah. It reinforces their correct decision what they were making. Mm -hmm. Then you can offer them the upsells, which are the, the sprinkles, the cream, the extra shot of coffee. Yeah. And that relates to whatever service you're offering. Yeah. You know, if, well, the, I was going to say on the back of that, I think it's very important to have you know if you provide a service or a product it's very important to have like a luxury version or like a you know a higher tiered version of that yeah. little product because you do get people that you know you buy it and they oh, just want the, the best of the best yeah, yeah. yeah and like if you don't offer it then you know they'll just buy the standard one and you know you could be making a lot of small business owners just say oh well that market's so small it's not worth it but yeah. again to reiterate what we're saying mm -hmm. even the presence of the luxury item yeah gives a, a positive warm affirmation yep. that they made the right decision picking the middle item mm -hmm. so no it's very powerful cool and um, so yeah so, so to recap this first resolution um yep up your prices and make sure you include inflation mm -hmm. um to cover rising costs that have happened and are going to happen it's a good time to assess your prices in general i think as well isn't it by you know going through costs it's and... psychologically appropriate mm -hmm. new year new style lot other businesses do it. I mean, the big corporates will have, you know, twice a year or even quarterly rises yeah. and, uh, and systematic rises throughout the period. But mm -hmm. as a small business owner, margins are... As, I was speaking literally to a client yesterday and we were going through their margins. Uh, I won't say who they are, but I'll give you some round numbers. So <laughs> they do £150,000. A month, um, and I said to them, add five percent markup addition. So they're fairly big to items, but they work on cost of materials plus a percentage. Yeah. And I said, add five percent, and it equated to an additional four thousand pound a month, forty-eight thousand pound a year mm -hmm. into their pocket. Yeah. And again, reality is that going to be in their pocket next year. Twenty twenty-three is going to be tough. Mm. But that may be in their pocket or half of it or even none of it. Maybe that just covers the additional right. unforeseen costs that are coming. Right. Um, I know people are talking about the cost of electricity prices, um, consumer-based, but in one of my businesses, because it's a business contract, I can't get any fixed, I can't get any contracts. Mm. Uh, we've come out of contract. Our electricity is quadrupled. Wow. You know, we were using about £200 a month on this facility, just, mm -hmm. just for lights. Wow. Uh, and now it's eight hundred pound a month. I don't know. That's small, smaller, but it all adds up. Really does add up. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, there was that side. So um, next one. Next resolution was get more customers. Okay. Please cut all your fingers. It's the captain of course. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, people don't stop to sniff the air. Mm. I've been in small business a long time. You just get caught in the churn. No. Turn the handle, churn, 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 Monday, Friday, Monday, Friday, Monday, Friday. You do have to stop. Mm. Whether it's periodically, whether you set aside half a day a week, whether you set up a day a month, and just look at acquiring new customers. No. So I want people to take this resolution, scratch it in their diary, a regular period, no. 
to solely concentrate on acquiring new customers. Right. And what I wanted to talk to you about from the marketing perspective is maybe we can give two or three ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Of, you know, the, um, I mean, like, yeah, we've been through different bits before. Um, yeah, first of all, if you're a local business, yeah, get on Google, local my business, so people can actually find you. Um, it's free to do, so, you know, um, it only takes sort of 30 minutes to set up. You know, upload your logo, put pictures on there. Um, yeah, seconds, get a website. Um, if you're, like, really stripped on budget, then, you know, there are free options available. Um, but yeah, if you've got a website that displays all your services and people can sort of read up a bit more about you, find out what jobs or products you offer, um, and, you know, see a little bit more about, uh, you know, like what, what you actually do, um, then yeah, that's always worth doing. Um, if you can afford it, then yeah, it always pays e? dividends to get like a, you know, a proper web developer or a company to, you know, to, to construct it for you. Um, but yeah, and then the other thing I'd ask for is, uh, reviews. So, you know, it's like they're, again, they're, they're free to do, you know, you don't have to necessarily incent to buy customers. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you're providing, you know, decent products and services, like, you know, reach out to the people that have received them and, you know, just say like, would you mind leaving me a quick, like 30 second review on Google? I think what's interesting, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. We went to a conference about SEO, search engine optimization, so how to consistently improve your website. You know, it's a, it's a very technical thing, but what I had to realize, I think it was 7%. And again, they do sort of guess, this is not an official statement, but their generalized stance was reviews account for 13% of the algorithm now for local businesses. Mm -hmm. And to put that into context, let's say you're very, very good at whatever you do, well. but your competitor is not as good and they have more reviews. Mm -hmm. When somebody types in your service, well. they are more likely to get the business mm -hmm because of the amount of reviews. Well, the difference is you should theoretically have a lot more reviews because you're better. Yeah. You're amazing at what you do within your business. Mm. But if you don't ask, you don't care. Yeah. So I, I really like that one. Yeah, we work with loads of great companies and you know they provide amazing products and services. But you know, like half the time they're just so wrapped up in what they're doing, you know, they don't bother to sort of, you know, go and collect all these reviews and, you know, get the customers to give feedback. Is, you've so. you've hit nail head, they're so busy, which is why I said Put something in the diary mm -hmm. where you've blocked out a slice of each week or each month and only you're like, oh, I'm doing that today yeah. and it will get done. Yeah. Okay. Um, my tips for getting more customers, what would I do? Seek out some Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. um, very, very powerful. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. Um of a product you sell, but if it's orientated towards mums, you've got websites like Mums Nets. Um, we've got a business that is orientated towards the motor trade, so we go and find the industry groups related to that just by typing in yeah. Facebook and then finding the groups and joining them. Yeah. And then we people ask questions. Oh, how would you do this? Oh, what should I do? And just ask them. Yeah. No, nothing else. They're trying to be helpful. Yeah. Um, but trust me, they soon. Oh, oh, that's great. Yeah, great advice. Uh, but actually, could you quite need to do that? Um, it's amazing. I was, I was watching the stats on a video of uh, a guy teaching how to blaster. Mm. And there is a bit. Back. And this was off the back of an article that was to do with, I think we discussed like creating how-to videos. Yeah. Great. 60, 70% of that audience is there to learn how to blaster, to do it themselves. Yeah. YouTube's a great educational tool. But there is a large percentage of those clients that will look at that and go, oh, okay, that's how it works with yeah, that's a bit difficult. Actually, let me reach out to these and see yeah. if they can give me a price to do that service. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so get our Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. um, how-to videos. How-to videos. Outreach is another one. You would have had contact. You'd have people that ask you for quotes. You'd have yeah. people that have used you in the past. Mm -hmm. The amount of times we go into a small business and they have not re-engaged no. communication. Yeah. Oh, let's ring Bob. Oh, well, Bob had a boiler for two years ago. I said, absolutely. So if you offer Bob a service on that boiler, mm. you know, let's get Bob under contract for the next 10 years at £50 a month. Well, he's more likely to buy with you because you've fitted his boiler. Well, yeah. Okay, cool. So it's good. Then, uh, and the final one was not too dissimilar is retain more customers. I don't know why I keep looking at that. It's a reminder. But <laughs> I think 2023 is going to be the year that things pivot 
mm-hmm. that people understand retaining a client is going to be so important. Absolutely. Like if cost of everything goes up, you know, like disposable income is going to get less and you know, people are going to struggle to pay for things. And, you know, they're going to be looking at, you know, what don't they need? Mm-hmm. You know, what can they cut, you know, like ties with if you've got a service project to retain a product? Um, so, yeah. So my top couple of tips with retaining products, uh, retaining clients would be say thank you. A lot of businesses forget to send an email, mm-hmm. gift bars, get a card, a freebie. Just remind them you're thankful for their business. Yeah. You know, that builds a, a, a bond that's greater than, you know, supplier consumer. Um, and they'll think twice. If, yeah. if, if push comes to shove and they need to cut something, they'll think twice. Yeah. Second one is more communication. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been discussing this. I believe economics and consumer wise, 2023 is going to be the year of communication. Yeah. People are always super unsure mm-hmm. about their just purchasing decisions during tough times. Yeah. And you have to keep more communication. You know, mm-hmm. on the digital side, it's regular reporting. Well, yeah. If it's, um, I know I ordered a mattress the other week mm. and I get a weekly email, <clears throat> excuse me, saying, oh, it's in order, materials have been secured, mm-hmm. oh, it's in the factory at this stage. Yep. Okay, you'll argue it's gimmicky, but mm. every one of those receipts is, is reassurance to me that I made the correct decision. Yep. And it costs next to nothing to set up. Yep. Um, once it's set up, it's autonomous. Mm. So again, we'll talk about automation in another video. Yep. Um, you can create these things by being mm. autonomous, but constant communication with clients. Mm. Um, yeah, if you don't know how, then you know there are people or companies that can help out. And you know, it's like again, like you said, it's just a one-off setup fee. Once it's set up, it's free to use, so you can just like leave it running, and you know, the customers reap the benefit. And the third thing going into this potential recession downturn is looking at how you charge, and can you introduce some sort of reoccurring business model in? Mm-hmm. Because large ticket purchases will dry up for a period of time at some stage. Mm-hmm. I'm not an economics professor. There's lots of clever people yep. with predictions, but I do remember the last recession. And the example I always think of is a um, good friend of mine, very successful uh, electrical contractor on uh, new built houses. Mm-hmm. He's very good at what he does and it's a lot of money. Last recession, the brakes went on. Mm. Construction just went, okay. no. And he had to quickly pivot into electrical maintenance. No. You know, changing bulbs, to fault finding, da, 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 both residential and commercial. Um, and that was a very painful experience to mm. pivot during the dangerous time. Yeah. Um, so that pivot element is, for me, like I say, how can you create a reoccurring revenue? No. Um, if you charge for one off items, mm-hmm. I don't know, a clothes shop, yeah. you sell clothes. Can you get some type of subscription model running no. with people no. where they can borrow the clothes and return them? And, you know, it has to be a profitable one again, you know, but if you can get something great care of it, they're paying you, you know, Netflix style, small amounts every month, yep. predictable income. Yep. Um, this will help when the big ticket one off purchases do drop. Yep. Um, does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, yeah no, I think that's some good advice. So, so yeah, so like I say, be good resolutions, get more customers. Mm-hmm. Find a way to pick the prices up, add value, yep. and find a way to retain. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I say, 2023 is going to sort the wheat from the chaff. Yeah. You've got two choices as a small business owner. Mm-hmm. Put the work in, yep. even if it means you know, you're just treading on water. Mm-hmm. Other people will fall by the wayside yeah. if they don't do this, um, and that will allow you to grow on the back. Cool. Nice and good advice. Well, a happy new year, dudes, and uh, cool. Likewise, I'll see you in uh, 2023. See you in 2023. <laughs>